The big news, obviously, the continuing fallout from the Brett Kavanaugh hearings. The Senate Judiciary Committee today voting on Brett Kavanaugh's nomination. Senator Jeff Flake has said that he will vote in favor of Brett Kavanaugh for the Supreme Court. It looks all but assured that Kavanaugh will enter the court. It looks also like some Democrats are going to be peeled along with some Republicans. That means Joe Manchin of West Virginia, maybe Heidi Heitkamp from North Dakota. It looks like Brett Kavanaugh probably ends up on the Supreme Court by early next week, which is as it should be. Because yesterday, Christine Blasey Ford gave testimony about what allegedly happened to her 36 years ago at a party. Not a single witness she has named has verified her story from the party. Brett Kavanaugh denied it entirely. And Kavanaugh was extraordinarily fiery in his denunciation of how the committee had handled its business, which is perfectly appropriate. Remember, these accusations first came about July 30th. Senator Dianne Feinstein of California saw them. She did nothing. She didn't report them to the FBI. She didn't start an investigation. She didn't do anything. She didn't ask Brett Kavanaugh a question, nothing. Instead, she just sat on this stuff for weeks and weeks and weeks and at the very last minute launched the allegation in an attempt to push this entire sham hearing beyond the election. That's all the Democrats want here. When Democrats say that they want an FBI hearing, they want an FBI investigation, what they really mean is they want a months long FBI investigation that pushes them beyond the Senate election in the desperate hope that Republicans will lose the majority in the Senate and then Democrats will hold a seat open until 2021 when they hope President Trump is defeated by Kamala Harris or Elizabeth Warren. That was their big plan here. It didn't happen yesterday and it mostly didn't happen because Brett Kavanaugh fought back. He fought back by really coming out strong. And we'll get to the media response to all of this, the Democratic response, which is just egregious and disgusting. But we begin with Brett Kavanaugh's actual comments yesterday. Brett Kavanaugh started by saying that his life has been destroyed by the committee, has been destroyed by allegations without a scintilla or iota of corroborative evidence. As was predictable, and as I predicted, my family and my name have been totally and permanently destroyed by vicious and false additional accusations. The 10-day delay has been harmful to me and my family, to the Supreme Court, and to the country. Okay, so he is exactly right about all of that. And this hearing was turned into a farce. As he made clear, he said, "This you guys have replaced advice and consent, which would be all about the political views of my judicial philosophy, and you've replaced that with search and destroy, an attempt to destroy my life, destroy my family, and Brett Kavanaugh is exactly right about this. The reason this resonated with so many conservatives is for, there are really a couple of reasons. One, the Me Too movement has been militarized into an allegation is made, we destroy your life. Not proof of an allegation, not multiple allegations, not credibility of an allegation, none of that. An allegation is made, we destroy your life. A mildly credible allegation is made, your life is over. And there are a lot of people, conservatives and non-conservatives, who are looking around and saying, that could happen to literally anyone. I was talking to a female friend last night, somebody who's led a pretty rough life, actually, and she was talking to me about the fact that such accusations could be leveraged against anyone, literally anyone. I'm, as I've said before, the cleanest person in American public life when it comes to matters sexual. Okay, but... At one point, I went over to this woman's house with her husband for, for dinner. She said, you know, what I could say theoretically is I, you, that my husband left the room for a minute and you tried to make a move on me, right? Anybody can say anything about anyone at any time. Now, I'm not saying that Christine Blasey Ford, the accuser in this case, is completely making up the story. I don't think that she's completely making up the story. I do think that it's quite possible that her memory is wrong. But regardless, you need some sort of corroborative evidence. And in just a few minutes, I'm going to discuss why it's so necessary to have corroborative evidence for these sorts of allegations. That's reason number one why so many people are uncomfortable with what's happening here. Reason number two why so many people are uncomfortable with everything that is happening here is because for years and years and years, Republicans have been ripped as racist, sexist, bigot, homophobes. They have been ripped as everything that is wrong with society, everything that is wrong with the world. And Brett Kavanaugh seems like and his record shows him to be a fundamentally decent person. There is not a hint, not a not the mildest reference to any sort of serious misbehavior over the course of his life until two minutes before he was supposed to be confirmed for the Supreme Court. And a lot of conservatives went, somebody has to stand up in the face of this. Somebody has to say no to this sort of character assassination. And Brett Kavanaugh did that yesterday and it resonated with people. It also resonated because Brett Kavanaugh wasn't just angry and righteously indignant. Brett Kavanaugh demonstrated a fundamental decency even in the midst of his anger. So here was some of his anger talking about replacing advice and consent with search and destroy. This confirmation process has become a national disgrace. The Constitution gives the Senate an important role in the confirmation process. 
but you have replaced advice and consent with search and destroy. And of course, he's exactly right about that. The, the m moment that really made this happen for Kavanaugh, that really saved his nomination, I don't even think was him coming out so strongly against the committee, which was perfectly appropriate. It was when he talked about his own family and he talked about his daughter, because this was the moment when I think a lot of people looked at Brett Kavanaugh and they said, okay, it's not, the, the anger is not fake. The hurt and the pain and the, and the rage that he must feel are enormous. And yet this is a guy who has the decency to talk about with his daughter what was going on. And his daughter has the decency to pray for the woman who's accusing her father, in his view, wrongly and, and falsely of attempting to rape her 36 years ago. I intend no ill will to Dr. Ford and her family. The other night, Ashley and my daughter Liza said their prayers. And little Liza, all 10 years old, said to Ashley, we should pray for the woman. It's a lot of wisdom from a 10 year old. Okay, all of this really did save Brett Kavanaugh's nomination. Now, what happened next is that Lindsey Graham came into the room. And to understand how monumental this was, you have to understand who Lindsey Graham is. The senator from South Carolina is not exactly known for being a firebrand. That is putting it mildly. Lindsey Graham is about as milk toast a human being as it is possible to find on planet Earth. It's one of the reasons why the Republican base has never been fond of Lindsey Graham. They've always thought of Lindsey Graham as the very soft-spoken gentleman from South Carolina who sort of wanted to go along to get along with the other side of the aisle. He voted in favor of the nominations of Sonia Sotomayor for the Supreme Court. He voted in favor of the nomination of Justice Elena Kagan for the Supreme Court. This is a guy who has a reputation for bipartisan work. Well, he came into the hearing room, the Senate Judiciary Committee hearing room yesterday, and he launched into what is going to be seen as one of the great all-time Senate speeches, really. I mean, this is one that people are gonna remember for quite a while. He launched into Democrats, and he said they have destroyed the entire process here, and it is disgusting what they have done to this man. What you want to do is destroy this guy's life, hold this seat open, and hope you win in 2020. You've said that, not me. You've got nothing to apologize for. This is the most unethical sham since I've been in politics. Boy, y'all want power. God, I hope you never get it. I hope the American people can see through this sham, that you knew about it and you held it. You had no intention of protecting Dr. Ford. None. She's as much of a victim as you are. Hey, it's, it, and this was a moment. I mean, it certainly was a moment because the fact is that this was mob justice being brought to bear against Brett Kavanaugh. And Lindsey Graham stood up and said, no, there has to be some sort of process here. There has to be some sort of corroborative evidence. President Trump tweeted yesterday, and this was clearly, I think, written by staff, and it was a good tweet. He said, Judge Kavanaugh showed America exactly why I nominated him. His testimony was powerful, honest, and riveting. Democrats' search and destroy strategy is disgraceful, and this process has been a totally sham and effort to delay, obstruct, and resist. The Senate must vote. Okay, he's exactly right about all this. Now, how will the Senate vote in the end? How will the, how will the Senate vote when it comes down to it? You know, there are some rumors today that, Joe, that, uh, that Donnelly, Joe Donnelly from, from Indiana, who is a Democrat, is going to vote against it. There were rumors yesterday that Donnelly was going to vote the same way as Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, Susan Collins of Maine, and Manchin of West Virginia. But... None of that is clear at this time. So it is, it is just not clear at this time. What is clear is that the Democratic outrage over all of this is just insane. It is just insane. Jill Filipovich, who is a, a feminist, she's a, she wrote a book called The Feminist Pursuit of Happiness. She literally wrote a tweet this morning that says, divorce your Republican husbands. Divorce your Republican husbands. This is where the Democrats are going. Their actual implication here is that if you want corroborative evidence, it's because you hate women, you don't care about the accounts of women, and you're fine watching a rapist enter the Supreme Court. No one is fine watching a rapist enter the Supreme Court, but we must have corroborative evidence for allegations. We can't just say that an allegation on its own is enough to destroy a man, particularly when he gives credible evidence on the other side. It's not that this woman, it's not that Christine Blasey Ford has evidence and then he has evidence. It's that she has no evidence and then he has evidence. She has no evidence. Every witness she says was at the party, denies that it ever happened, denies remembering, says we don't remember this ever happening. Her best friend, Leland Kaiser, came forward and said that she doesn't even know Brett Kavanaugh. And when asked about this, Christine Blasey Ford basically impeached her own best friend said, as a witness, basically said my own best friend doesn't know what she's talking about. She has a health problem. I mean, that's pretty amazing stuff. And we're just going to ignore all that.